All right, hello, welcome to Adventures in Lollygagging. We are playing Die tonight. We are continuing our Broken Vessels campaign. We are on, I think, episode five or so, something like that. We are getting closer and closer to a very important decision uh, that these uh, that these players will have to make. If you're unfamiliar with Die, if it's your first time checking this out, uh, this game is very uh, weird. It is about uh, adults in there. I think we, we we put you guys, I think, like 30, early 30s, I think is where yep. you guys are at yep. right now, uh, who have been, uh, who, are, who are teenage friends who uh, they got in trouble in high school, very much like the Breakfast Club, met each other during a detention, and they started playing TTRPGs. They started playing uh, some role-playing games, and then, uh, and then they lost touch uh, for a variety of reasons, and uh, due to the loss of a, of a shared friend, they have all reunited now to to play uh, to play a uh, another role playing game in honor of their fallen friend uh, Stephen. And uh, things got weird. Things got weird as they were magically teleported into the actual world setting uh, of their of their teenage role playing game universe. And so uh, that's what we've been sort of digging with digging around with the last couple of weeks. Uh, and we'll continue it tonight. Why don't we go ahead and do just a quick intro? Just tell us who you're playing, et cetera, et cetera. And then we'll, we'll dive in. So uh, who's up first? Evan, tell us about uh, tell us about your character. Yeah, I'm playing Chad slash artist. Chad is a kind of almost retired, very famous soccer player that completely ignored these people for the past 15 plus years due to his fame and just other things in life. So it's a bit awkward that he's kind of came back and met them, but he's uh, plays artist, which was a kind of a childhood character that he had with his brother that it was inspired by his brother because he was sick. And when he was sick at the hospital, him and his brother would draw crazy monsters and do goofy things, just things to keep your mind off what was actually happening in reality. And so this is kind of the first time also. Oh no! That he's really there kind of snapped back to those okay. feelings of what it was like. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much okay. It. Fair enough. Uh, we got most of it. There's a tiny blip where you where you you were out for a second or two, but I think we got I think we got the gist. Uh, next up, uh, we've got Kipser. Kipser, tell us about Leaf slash Amory. Uh, Amory was aiming to be a natural scientist, uh, instead got, uh, lost in the woods and then had an accident, uh, and, uh, lost their arm. No one came to visit them in the hospital, which they're not bitter about at all. Uh, came back to, to play a game. No, no bitterness here. Uh, came back to play a game one last time with some friends to see if there was any emotion still. And, uh, instead they regrew and their arm into a giant skeleton arm, which is really cool. And uh, they get a big scythe, and they they talk to people sometimes. Just normal normal people that are definitely not gods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, I do recall, though, I think something was revealed last time around that there might have actually been someone who tried to visit you uh, in the hospital. Uh, yeah, that's probably not, unfortunate. <laughs> probably not the person you wanted <laughs> to visit you in the hospital, but someone certainly tried. Yeah. Uh, but he will not be doing that now, as, uh, as bad oh. things happened to him last session. Uh, we were talking about uh, high school stalker Mike, uh, so that was good. I slipped and fell, and then he was dead. I don't know what happened. <laughs> These things happen. These things. These happen. things happen. Speaking of making uh, people dead, uh, let's talk. Uh, let's talk about Diala, who, uh, who who just tore apart an entire innocent fishing village. Uh, so uh, so yeah, Massacre. Melissa, defend yourself. Uh, no. I don't know that that's okay. <laughs> my fair. yes ending failed entirely right there. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. No but. You can do no but. No but works too. Uh, so uh, Delilah, um, as a teenager, uh, went through a, a very serious fire, had lots of scarring and all such things. So her paragon, Diala, is the vigilant knight. Uh, she is always alert and watchful and interested. Uh, she has a sword that is very, very, very mean to her um, and says all of the OCD things out loud. Um, and yeah, she is working on those uh, emotion night skills, uh, which includes like releasing all of that in fire form. And when 
other members of the party make the choice for you that your emotional intensity is going to be a little bit more than you were intending. That means that when those emotions are released, it is in a broader area than was planned. Uh, that is my defense of uh, Diella. Gotcha. Gotcha. Just so, so you're shifting the blame onto Dredd, who is next to go. So Dredd, defend yourself. <laughs> Dredd is comfortable with the absolute destruction of that village and simply can't find it within himself to care. So his defense is, eh. But back when he was a teenager, Deacon Dredd was a swashbuckling theater kid who loved life and had everything in front of him including an evil girlfriend named Michelle, uh, until his father destroyed it all by getting drunk and killing one of his classmates, which eventually pulled Deacon into the life of a mobster's fixer. He Problems came up for the mob, and he fixed them by whatever means necessary. He's trapped in that life until he fell into this world, where he is back to being the dictator dread and finding that he prefers it here over the real. And that's strangely something that you have in common with our next character, despite seeming like pretty much everything else you do not have in common. Uh, that is Tristan. Uh, Jeremy, tell us about your yeah. dumb character. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Sean was a very insecure young man that grew up into a very insecure adult who chickened out on some major life choices and is now a single dad and call center supervisor. But within the game world, he gets to play the swashbuckling fool Tristan Wade that's a paladin of a Nancy with all sorts of amazing powers that gets rewarded for doing absolute nonsense. And it's just kind of wonderful. Yeah, it absolutely is. Uh, he is absolutely hilarious. And at some point in time tonight, Aaron as Dread is going to turn to Tristan and say, Sean, I fucking hate you. And uh, my life will be complete. And that'll be great because it happens every week. All right. Uh, so let's do... Gotcha. <laughs> let's do a quick summary so as it's already been kind of mentioned here and there but you all were trapped within this uh this fishing village this place called cinnamon's lounge you were getting attacked by faux michelle dread's ex-girlfriend uh from high school uh also faux mike uh stalker of leaf back in high school as well was involved uh as were several zombie veterans who was uh sort of swarming and taunting tristan for his cowardice and his uh, superficial heroism uh but you all handled it uh, Dread, you managed to sort of send Michelle off into the shadows with your uh, with your dictator abilities. Uh, I think Leaf just straight up murdered Mike in the shadows, as one would expect. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Artist probably saved Tristan's life by uh, turning on some jetpacks and getting them the hell out of there. Uh, and Dread, as has already been mentioned, supercharged Diala, and Diala went uh, went pretty crazy and destroyed and burnt down with her. This roaring inferno uh, took the whole village down. Uh, you all, at that point, uh, started to continue your trek northward. You're heading to a place uh, called the uh, the Walled City. Specifically, you're looking for the Sludge Factory, which apparently would give entrance to that city. And the reason being is that you think that's where your elusive uh, dungeon master, uh, Billy, me, uh, the, or slash the machinist, might be, uh, as, he, uh, as he might have some answers to what the hell's going on, how are you guys here, uh, all those types of things. Along the way, you've been seeing some weird signs. Uh, this happened pretty much, uh, I think, second or third episode you started seeing them, but you're seeing them even more recently now. Uh, these like strange signs of like the world fracturing or being you're behaving in some sort of strange way. Uh, a, a beached whale spoke to you, said, you're, we're all going to die, exploded into thousands of fish who continued to say the same thing and downwards and downwards. Uh, the lights, the sun, sunlight, like the day night cycle seemed to flicker on and off like halogen bulbs. Uh, and I think Artis also re recalled a moment where he saw a fracture in the sky and the ceiling and TV static appear briefly before repatching itself. We also got to meet, uh, was it, uh, Amaterasu, the goddess of light, uh, who gave you all these portable rays of light to help you, uh, help you in your travels. Uh, Pennsylvania Poke, who is Steven's character, has returned as well here and there. Um, kind of told you all, reiterated the fears of the locals, that they think the world is ending, that they think the machinist is building something or doing something within that impenetrable city, all those types of things. And 
uh, one uh, artist was about ready to bypass a whole mess load of stuff. The sky changed and suddenly his jetpacks wouldn't work anymore as the sunrise came unexpectedly and the fair gold sputtered out. But regardless, you all did find yourselves almost immediately or strangely during your conversation with Pennsylvania Polk there at the sludge factory, the very place that you were trying to get to. And so, yeah, that's where we're going to start. Uh, so just to sort of set the scene, uh, I'm going to say that you guys are, uh, you're not immediately at the door, but you can see it. It's right there. You're probably within half a mile or so. Uh, it's, uh, it's an enormous, it's an enormous structure, but in comparison to the massive wall that lurks on the horizon behind it, it seems dwarf. That's how big this walled city might be. When you look at it, um, you can see that it's got the, you know, it, it has the the markings of something that might be, uh, you know, steampunk in origin. Uh, you see many a tower, uh, you see many uh, uh, many a building connected by catwalks and walkways. Uh, you see lovers and elevators. You see uh, also other things as well. You see there's guards flying around or on the parapets themselves, possibly. Was that a gargoyle possibly kind of flying around here and there? You see turrets that seem to be manned and operated. Uh, they're also, as you're kind of peeking around from a distance, there's a uh, more than one large creature that seems to be moving about on the shore. Uh, if you recall, the sludge factory connects to the sea itself. And the sea here is, if you, if you recall, is just rust colored. And, and just polluted beyond beyond imagination um but that is kind of what you see as you approach um from a distance and so i'll turn it over to you what are you guys doing okay look we find science fiction this is a completely different genre this is not this isn't what the gargoyles are fantasy and you got the jet packs over there and this is steampunk what is this mess Leaf, you're going to have to get awesome. over it. No. I refuse. No matter the setting, look for the door, right? I feel like this is Chad's influence on Billy. It's, you know, something, whoa, whoa, something, whoa. something. Magic is just technology people don't understand yet. Uh, all so, I got to say is uh, the whatever the light on and off thing kind of screwed me over because I don't have any more fair gold, so I can't fly around. Yeah. Well, I'm basically back in the fantasy world. I, yeah, I'm fantasy yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah. but that <laughs> was amazing, and thank you. Is yeah. like a little too much, if I'm being honest. I, mean, I it's hard. I can't believe I'm saying that. That was really fast. You know, we had a good heart to heart though on the way down. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, she's very more often. Very glad that both of you made it safely back to the ground again. So now, so where can our feet now on the ground take us? Uh, probably okay. through the disgusting door. sludge. Yeah, are we mm. gonna have to swim in, or is there a door somewhere around here? You guys see? Swimming in is a perfect idea. That's brilliant. Sean, I think you should give it a shot. Let's see how it goes. Well, wait. Done. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Tristan, you At wade least. out. <laughs> wade out into the ocean. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You, I, I'm going to assume you're probably going to get a little closer than half a mile away before you actually do so, or am I wrong? <laughs> I did this motion. Okay, it's a did long motion. ass swim. <laughs> okay, it is going to be one long ass swim. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So first, go ahead and give me a contest difficulty one. So remove okay. one of your successes. Uh, as the filth in here uh -huh. is is worse than you actually imagined it to be. Uh, you, okay. You've you been walking up the shore for a while, and you've seen yeah. the water, but it, this proximity to the factory itself, it's not so much, like, it doesn't feel like water anymore to the point mm -hmm. where it almost, like, there's a viscosity to this that yeah. is not commonplace to water. And it's getting yeah. in your ears, your eyes, your nose, your mouth. That sounds really gross, but I'm glad <laughs> I'm up to four boons on my fool dice. Okay. And I somehow... Oh, no, I did, because that's my one. So here's the thing. It's difficulty one. It's difficulty right? one. So I got one success, but I did get a fluke. So I somehow okay. fail, 
but okay with some sort of fluke so let's see so you all on the shore as you watch tristan swim out uh, a ways he is moving very very slowly more than once you hear him cough up and gargle whatever it is that this uh that this liquid surrounding the the factory is and at a certain point you just watch him just just disappear uh, <laughs> he is just oh. not visible to any of you anymore he has either he he got pulled down or something pulled him down or he just drowned uh, and you just see him you just see him disappear uh, and I'll, I'll narrate the fluke in a minute, but let me get everyone else mm -hmm. a, uh, a chance to, how do you react to that moment? <laughs> no reaction. Okay. Well, look. <laughs> Dread maybe... goes, hmm. <laughs> All right, we've, we're going to have to walk around then. Well, clearly, I, that's not the way to go. I yeah. figured. I mean, yeah, I figured we're... we'd get a little closer first, but he just jumped in. Right, and we're like heroes. You can't just drown, right? I mean, he'll come back up. We'll just oh, there's no way he's stacked. He's probably only though. gone really like 15 feet from us. We'll just walk up and go where his body was last seen and wait for him. I'm yeah. We might be saving, saving Kristen. You're really n none of really none of you, and Delilah's gonna jump in. Okay. Oh, oh. So That's sweet. <laughs> Diala or Delilah, uh, you, uh, what do you prefer? Do you prefer us to refer to you? I think you're in your Paragon form. So it's Diala, Diala. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Diala, you go rushing out to help Tristan. Uh, you swim out and it, and I'll also need that contest from you. Uh, as you two were effectively, if you fail this, getting sickly and you're going to take, uh, essentially a point of damage, uh, temporarily. Uh, until like this sort of situation passes, meaning until you gain entry into the sludge factory, your guard's going to be down uh, that if that's what you took. Um, and you can't find him. You're looking, you're searching. Are you opening your eyes? Ooh. I mean, you kind of have to, I would imagine, look for him. Um, I, I, have my, uh, I have my sword out that I'm mm -hmm. poking around okay, just in front of me inhales a whole thing of this liquid <laughs> at a certain point you do reach out and you stab something and it gives and it and it's the same feeling that you have whenever you uh whenever you stab a person uh, or, okay. or a creature it has that kind of give uh so my rolls by the way were two sixes and a two Okay, then you're fine. Uh, it was difficulty one, so you just need the one success. And so you're you're managing to withstand the just the nastiness of this of this uh, of this viscous fluid that you're in. But when you pull the when you kind of use your sword to sort of pull up whatever it is, you realize it is not Tristan uh, that you are pulling up, <laughs> but rather this large mutated looking tuna uh, that has several eyes. Uh, it looks very much. <laughs> Like an episode of The Simpsons where you see these three big bulbous eyes and kind of this orangey color. And it's, and it's, I don't know if fish don't have tongues, right? Yeah. Like you just see something spittling out their, their mouth as you lift it up. And, and it slowly. Fish you know, goes back dies, in the sludge. And it just starts to float on the surface. <clears throat> it was a That's mercy when, killing. And that's when you look up and you can see that about 100 yards northward uh, up the shore, you see a sudden disruption in the water as Tristan, you pop up having failed at swimming, but luckily caught some sort of riptide. And it just sort of took you forward. And it was a <laughs> harrowing trip as you were bumping your head on various who knows what could have been reefs, could have been debris, could have, you know, detritus, you don't know other creatures. But as you pop up, You've got cuts and bruises here and there. A couple more bite marks on your face from something no. oh, in the right side. But there you are, and you've made it a little bit closer. Oh, there he is. The water's fine. I mean, it's not. This was so avoidable. Um, I'm not sure why. <laughs> I'm coming. Um, I'm coming your way. You got there really, really fast, and now I'm I'm all um, sludge. -y. You're doing great. Grab the fish. Use it as a flotation device. So just like those little like paddleboard things that you give like little kids in the pools, and it's like what the fish is, and you just see. Like, you grab this, 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 this fish, 
with the three eyes <laughs> and the big stab wound and you just hang on to it. You start to paddle. You do like the Richard Dreyfuss Roy Scheider kick, with kick, your kick. legs. And then you feel the current start to kick in. And eventually you see yourself being swept around this this uh, sludgy jelly a jetty and like in the direction of where Tristan is. Again, about 100 yards up. You don't get all the way there, but you get, you know, yeah, half, halfway there or so. Like they've gone so slow that our walking speed has yeah. already caught up to Tristan and we're just kind of like watching this in confusion. Absolutely. If the three of you have been walking this whole time, it has not, there's been no obstacle to face. Uh, it's a little undulating and rocky here and there and kind of slippery on the rocks, but nothing Ooh. that requires rolls. I just had an idea. I'm going to put my hand in the sludge and I'm going to use the bastardization of the bless spell. Is I'll try and channel holy energy into it to try and bless it, but fail. But yet also, if it sizzles, I'll know it's evil. Oh, I'll detect the evil on the sludge. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, it does not sizzle. Okay. You know, um, Chad, if you had your little gold batteries uh it'd be pretty nice to have a submarine right now as much as that would be breaking it the genre mm. in it but we're already in steampunk yeah it's um, unfortunate i could wish for one but i don't want more debt and they they're fine tristan roll a wisdom test wisdom yeah okay uh can't see how I could apply my full dice to that, so I just roll my two. <laughs> okay. I got one. <laughs> okay. You reach out. You cast the bless spell. There's no there's no sizzle. Um, but strangely enough, as you as you cast the spell, the sludge, like there's we'll say there's a patch of it that seems noticeable, right? Almost like a like a chunk of seaweed floating in the uh, in the water. And you reach out, you go to cast it, doesn't sizzle. But you also see it recoils and you almost hear like a <gasps> as it verbally <laughs> makes this like reaction to the to the spell. I found out that the sludge has allergies. Uh, <laughs> uh, Eureka! <laughs> <laughs> it's it's too early. What did it's you say? Too early, Sean. It's just the too sludge early. The <laughs> is allergic to holy magic. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> there are times when I think like, oh, I should clarify. I don't think Jeremy understood, and then I realize, no, Jeremy understood. He's just being a fool. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, so great. Oh God. All right, we'll oh. say uh, to speed things along. You have all reconvened either on the shore or just off the shore will put you at within about a hundred yards or so. But at this point you realize that you are actually uh, close enough to potentially be spotted as you do notice that, like I said, there are what looks like turrets or defense mechanisms leaf. Now that you're a little bit closer, you look up and you do see medieval trebuchets on some of the towers, the, the parapets here. So at least there's okay, that. that's more like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. But then you look down at the things that are moving around on the shore and they look like giant mechanical golems. Uh, so there's that. No. And then uh, you also notice that there appear to be like these different uh, kind of multicolored, almost like uh, like the, the, the rainbow coloration that happens with like oil and water kind of mixing a bit. You can see that here and there, almost like like you're, 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 you're seeing force fields at various points. Uh, of this large factory. Uh, I'll say that because you guys are smart enough, you probably can quickly step out of the way and hide behind a rock or something to not immediately be notif noticed, but it's just how do you all want to go about handling this to get in there or whatever it is you want to do? There's not one noticeable entrance, but it looks like there could potentially be many entrances as there's various windows, various doors. There's probably something beneath the water if you really wanted to brave that. Um, there's all sorts of ways that you can get inside. So it's really kind of just up to you all how you want to handle it. Uh, I'll try going through the sludge. Anyone else want to try something different? I mean, that idea was really good. Thank you. Yeah, you guys I mean, seem to really enjoy it. Yeah, that's really gross. Um, we could knock out five of the robot 
boys that uh, are just down there and super can't wear the suits in. Yeah, I mean, I could try and see if I could find like blueprints or something through Adam. Now that sounds like a good idea. But I'm going to jump in the sludge first and then I'll do it because that makes more sense, right? I'd really prefer not to I, have to I do can't that. Do the people up above in the turrets are used to seeing strange objects in the water. So you cover yourself in the sludge, flop around all funny. They have no reason to suspect you. Right. Or they're used to shooting things that are coming out of the water. I don't see many arrows in the water. Anyways, Artis is going to go to a nearby rock and spray paint a computer and start Googling sludge factory <laughs> blueprints. Most recent. <laughs> I love that you just spray paint like an interface. Yeah, it use. makes zero sense, right? But it, that's just what we see. It's so good. All right. So you you crouch down behind one of these uh, slimy rocks. You spray paint as best you can what looks like a uh, like a commodore or something something some some retro looking uh, uh piece of tech uh and yeah you can start uh kind of tap and go ahead and roll let's say int test uh yeah let's go int all right as you start seeing if there's any one any way to gain information one success okay so you realize as you start tapping into this into this system that you just created. And you even hear Adam kind of kick in, I sense ley lines in the area. There seems to be a network of magic saturating the place. And as Adam's kind of going through that, you start typing in and we're seeing the sudden, uh, like the sudden appearance of code show up on your screen. Uh, but instead of it being laid out in a way that is alphanumerical, it's runic. And you can see all these different arcane symbols stop, start to pop up here and there. And you realize there is this magical field that seems to be kind of surrounding this entire locale. And you are just on the edge of it. Uh, and then as you continue to mess around with it and you can hear the voice you know, of Adam kind of directing you and some of those arcane symbols are quickly translated, you're able to pull up uh, a partial schematic. Uh, and so what you basically would get from this mechanically is that as you guys begin to explore this place, uh, there's going to be like you have to kind of do, you know, roles to progress and such as we kind of, you know, dig into that um, uh, into that. Uh, what's it called? Um, like kind of skill endeavor, the delve. But with this schematic that you have uh you can roll some of those at advantage so it'll kind of give you boost to potentially mm. like pro progress even further uh in terms of entrances like i'll say right for now uh there are a few modes of of ingress that you can definitely tell there seems to be uh sort of a, a pump intake below the surface so you could probably get through that uh however it could be dicey considering you know if the mechanisms are are at work uh there does seem to be this uh sort of on the, on the rear side, kind of on the north side, still on the water, there seems to be sort of a loading dock area that you might be able to find your way in through there. Uh, and also some of those larger parapets, there's two very, very tall ones are observation towers. So you could potentially scale and kind of climb your way in there as well. Uh, so those are probably three that I would say stand out to you as you look at this. All right. He will, uh, with his other hand, just kind of swipe over the spray paint. You just see the interface disappear. And he'll relay the three options. Well, I'm not one for going through the pump station. Scale on the tower seems like it's going to leave us pretty exposed. So the loading dock sounds like the obvious choice. What do you think? Do we want to... Hitman throw some coins out and attract some of these guys down there to see if we can't steal a little bit of their kit to wear uh, before loading dock. You sound I mean, like you really like those. We can give it a shot. Yeah, you really <laughs> want to be sci-fi. It's kind of weird, but... Uh, uh, no, 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 those no, Those are the no, sci-fi no, guys right not, there. No, no, I mean, if we find Fairgold, I mean, my gun can shoot from anywhere I can see. So, I mean, I could go back to the ocean and start shooting people, but... Until then, I'm just kind of, I'm a normie, can I say? 
You just I... mapped out this whole place. You're no normie. Thanks, I do agree the John. loading dock is probably the best way in. It certainly sounds the cleanest. Do we have any I'm like, sort of excited to... to climb. It would be cool to be up there and be able to look at everything, but okay. probably not the smartest way to go in. Do we have a way to get to the loading bay that's like secret, secret sneaky? Anyone have like fogs or something we can cover ourselves up as we get closer? Or... I don't know. You guys can do some crazy shit. Mm. If we get close, if we get close enough that they can hear my voice, I can potentially blind one of them from our presence, but not a whole group, not easily. Hmm. Hmm. So if I'm wondering if this is a way, so with emotion draining, obviously the emotion that I have is vigilance. Oh. So if we were to find guards and I were to drain their vigilance, it says that the target's behavior changes proportionally. So would they then not care about being vigilant if I can drain their vigilance from them? That sounds like that makes a lot of sense to me if that's what you want to do. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, if this, if all ahead. else fails, I'll Deus Ex Machina and we'll get through. I'm pretty sure one of those gods are going to eat you and <laughs> soon enough. But eh, you just make a few deals. It's all good. Can we see like the path that would be to the loading bay? Like, do we see a lot of guards towards that yeah, area? Yeah. Or so it's not like you're seeing. It's not swarming. Like the outside is not on the ground. It's not swarming. But you do see. They're very large. Uh, they do seem golem-like, automaton-like. They, they definitely have that kind of look to them. They're much bigger than you all. Uh, you can tell just from this distance that they're not just the normal heighted five to six foot. I'm sorry, five to six foot four person. Uh, they look much taller than that. Uh, but you can see that there's a couple paths around. Like there's a, a hill that kind of goes up inward uh, away from the ocean. You can perhaps wrap around that way. Uh, but there also is kind of a, you know, and there's slopes there. Uh, and that does come underneath what looks like one of those parapet observation towers. With, so it's possible you could be seen from above. Uh, you also could try to skirt around and kind of underneath this dock and try to make it to the rear side of the factory. But that would also take you past some of these golems and things. So no matter which way you take it, like it's still going to require you to either come up with a really good strategy or just rip a rip some dex tests to see if you can stealth your way there. Well, short of taking them, short of taking a couple of them out, at least, I think we're going to either have to sneak past them or be prepared to stop a couple of them somehow. Yeah, I say we sneak. And then if the sneaking doesn't work, then I will try to make them much less interested in being observant. Of course, I'm going to make sure to reapply some sludge to myself. <laughs> Uh, okay. I will be plan D after all the other ones. All of you, uh, other, uh, you know, you recognize, by the way, that Tristan stinks. I was about like, to say that. Absolutely reeks. And the little cuts and, 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 and things that he has on his face and his arms coated with some of that sludge, you can see it's beginning to discolor and you can see it's growing various things on it. You can see some blistering, some pock marks, and you can see it almost looks like these little tiny an you know, anemones kind of starting to come out and wiggle here and there. Okay, okay, this is too gross. Tristan, uh, hold still for a second, yeah? Okay. Great, I'm not gonna touch you, don't worry. And then a bunch of like misty forms start to appear around you and, and fill into just some randomly uh, very disfigured, uh, stabbed individuals or strangled individual ghosts that will touch your face and uh, start to absorb some of that to heal you. It will, we'll say that you do notice uh, some of what was appearing on Tristan's face is now sort of transferred into these ghostly visages and some of those pock marks and things are starting to show up here and there. Uh, there's still the residue of the sludge uh, that's on his face. And so until he really cleans himself off, I think there's always going to be something lingering behind, but likely whatever it was where he took some harm before has probably been, been recovered. Oh, How does Diala look? Uh, you passed your contest, so you withstood it. Uh, okay. Just, so the yeah. sludge has just worked its way just over time. Yeah, so just it was kind of just infecting him, of coursing through him. 
yeah like you're still coded in it but like it didn't really in, like get in and start to infect and and cause problems in the way it did with tristan nice okay so what do we do it uh keeping at least uh 10 feet away from tristan at all times and sneaking so now that there's less sludge on us we won't be like you know like wet sneaker (laughs) attempting to sneak got it uh okay uh so let's go ahead and uh i think if i remember correctly tristan artis you both have three decks diala Mm -hmm. leaf dread you all have two decks uh is anyone kind of trying to lead the way through or we all just kind of you know we can have have one person just try to lead the group through uh or um what we if ever if we don't want to necessarily handle it in that regard we could just have everyone roll if we want to do it i mean i've got natural camo on i'm ready to do some commander crawl you should fly. I mean, lead. should we let him lead? We've let him make his own decisions, like jumping in the sludge, and we're really coming back. I to heard encouragement it. from Deacon. I'm doing it. Okay. <laughs> That's too <laughs> slow, Chad. The energy that Sean lives on. Tristan, yep. you begin to once more. Uh, I think it was where you're going to go kind of wade in, into like the shore and underneath the dock and kind of mm-hmm. work your way about. Totally underneath the dock. That way you can do some like monkey bar action. Yeah. Trying to see if you can come up and like grab somebody by the ankle and throw them off. Sure. As you uh, begin to lead the way, and you're out a little bit further than everybody, trailblazing a path, one of those creatures, uh, those golem-like uh, figures, starts to kind of moves in this sort of rigid fashion. Uh, it's very rusty, metallic in many ways, but you also see, uh, now that you're a little bit closer, Tristan, that there's swaths of some sort of texture or fabric when it gets even closer, you realize it's not fabric. It's skin that seems to have been stretched and pulled over certain places, including the face. And uh, Tristan, as they get close, you realize that it's not its not like the sound of the body that is like grinding that's making that, but it's rather the voice. There's like this, this voice box that's coming out and you hear hut, 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 hut. And when you kind of peer over... There's a face that looks extraordinarily familiar to you. Tristan, tell us about the head of your ROTC uh, back in high school. Oh, my God. David Harper, that son of a bitch. He was all about powerlifting. But the thing was, he was only five foot two with a barrel chest. Of course, you can bench press 500 pounds when you've only got to move your stupid little T-Rex arms three inches, you son of a bitch. Oh, and you see he comes down hut 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 and you unmistake it it, it it the face is is stretched over top of what is likely just kind of a a, a very sort of say metallic cylinder but it's stretched and pinned with these almost frankensteinian like uh like pythons that kind of go in here and there and it's kind of looking out hut 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 as if it's looking for you. What did you roll? Uh, go ahead and roll that dex if you haven't already done so. Okay. This I is going to be contested it. Uh, against its, uh, it's what's it called? It's aware, or it's a, uh, hang on. Got two. Let me check something. Two's not bad. Okay. Uh, sorry, one sec. I totally lost where I put this thing stat block. You can't open that name that so fast. Neck muscles are too swollen, <laughs> so he can't look up at this angle. I mean, if he's swole, he's probably not dexterous, right? There's, there's too much meat to move. Yeah, he can only move his neck at like ten degree angles. So I'm gonna take advantage of that. Oh, uh, the Batman requires thing. the whole body to move. <laughs> 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 okay. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, it's not going to be contested. It was just going to be uh, difficulty of one. And since you got two successes, you're okay. Like you, you're right underneath it as it gets kind of to the edge of where you're, you're kind of hiding behind what looks like this, this old gnarly pole, uh, post holding up part of the deck, uh, the dock here. And it looks around like it's waiting, 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 waiting. And then you can see a second one is starting to put, and then the one that's down by the shore by you turns about face and begins to start moving back up. And they're just kind of moving in this this basic century path. But as you're watching the second one come down, likely it's like you saw 
you know, you saw the first one. That was that was kind of peculiar. But as the second one comes down, you see the same thing. Like there's a face that looks very, very familiar. Uh, Tristan, was there uh, maybe a, an army or, or a navy recruiter that would come to your ROTC in high school and try to sort of get folks within uh, within the ROTC to maybe sign up? Yeah, uh, Glenn Russell, real folksy, kind of southern guy. Just uh, not the biggest dude in the world, but just kind of, you know, charming and nice. And uh, they kind of had the thing where like this smile would go up wide, but the eyes stayed kind of glassy and dark. Mm -hmm. And you see that smile is has been pulled like the face as it's been stretched across the metal cylinder. The smile is pulled extra and you can see the eyes themselves like they're not actual eyes, but rather like just these sockets. And within it, you can see almost like this googly looking uh, eye casing. Uh, and as it's moving down and you almost hear the huts in like this southern like hut, 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 hut. And you realize that you're staring at two uh, primary, like military folk uh, from within your your high school days. Like coming up, coming down, or looking. Like there's a path. Like there's time. If you time it right, you can get through just fine. But there they are, going up and down, up and down. Okay. Uh, the rest of you, you see the path that Tristan has has set for you. Um, you guys can follow it. You don't necessarily have to roll as long as you kind of wait for Tristan's signal. Uh, you're able to sneak past. You get past this little sentry and you're off and behind this uh, this factory. Uh, you can see, much like you expected from your, your little research there, artist, uh, that there is kind of this very wide bay, like garage. Uh, you have to climb up a little bit, but it's not something that would require any kind of roll. And you could probably just give each other a boost. Uh, but you can see that there's this very large bay. There's all these uh, chains that have been stretched here and there, a police system. It looks like there's some kind of, there's some sort of door that would come down, but right now it's currently, uh, it's currently wound up. You also notice in the water near you, there are what looks like destroyed boats uh, as if it's like they've sunken or they've been sort of ripped apart uh, at some point. Uh, but you all can can move in if you would like. It doesn't look like the parapets, those those watchtowers, have a good vision uh, from from where you're at right now. So you think you could probably climb up and get inside if you wanted. I guess. Hmm. Do we want to climb up? Deacon's already climbing up to get inside. He's well. Yeah, up we go. Uh, Artist is going to look for fair gold in this garage. Okay. See if uh, he feels any pull. When you climb up, uh, you all look around and you can see that this kind of garage area, uh, it, it definitely has a couple like storage bays that look to have been in you know, long disuse. But you also look around and you can see that there are there's tons of machinery, tools and stuff lying around. There's like this layer of rust on everything. Uh, you also can see that there are these different workshop locations within this massive uh, room here and there. These like discarded, uh, these discarded experiments or these discarded uh, bits of machinery that might have been used for some purpose whenever this factory was actually functioning appropriately. And you also notice that there are apparently several let's say what's by several i would say four people in here that are kind of milling about kind of doing things here and there there are they are kind of going through some of the debris this is a very very large industrial room so it's not like you're immediately seen and it's spread out in different locations uh, but if you're specifically looking for anything that might give you a source of fair gold go ahead and roll an int Are these people wearing the Letterman jackets? They <laughs> do not appear to be. No. One. Okay. Uh, you do see on the far side uh, of this this large this large bay this large chamber through where a couple of these folks are milling, uh, you can see that there is like a workshop bench, and on it there is kind of this there's there's a, a, a fragment. You're not sure if it's metal. You're not sure if it's 
uh, if it's like porcelain or something like that, it's just like floating over top of the workshop bench. And there's this glowing aura around it uh, and scattered all on the ground near it. There are all manner of similarly shaped, similarly broken, similarly glowing objects. They're just very ever so slightly kind of glowing on the ground here and there. There's probably some fair gold over there. Now, Dredd, you were one of the first people in here. When you look around, you notice that the ghouls in here, uh, these these people kind of milling about that are just sort of going through some things, they also kind of look a... They look kind of familiar as well. Maybe you just have Michelle on the brain after what just went down at Cinnamon's Lounge. They don't have the Letterman's jackets on, but... Man, if that doesn't... Is that Tony? And you remember, as it starts coming back to you now, that there were friends. Like, she had friends, and you had friends, and when you were when you were at the like the heyday of, of Deacon's like high school career, when he was uh, kind of big man on campus, he was dating Michelle, he had this, this... You had friends, I use the term loosely, that would linger around, that would kind of flock to you. And one of these, like, you see a guy you might recognize, Tony, there are a couple others... Um, Tell us about one there, Deacon. Who's who's one of these kind of, you know, hangers on for you, like during you and Michelle's relationship that completely ditched you and made you oh, a yeah. social pariah? Davey. So Davey, he was a year behind us. Uh, good kid. He was that, you know, that kid who's always running up. Can I, can I carry your books? You know, hey, you know, what's going on? What are you doing after school? Actually was actually in love with your girlfriend. Had the thing for Michelle, but too cowardly to, to, to make a move or even talk to her, really. But, uh, you know, he was there every day. Every morning I walk in the school, he's waiting for me. Every day at lunch, he's like, hey, can I go get your food for you? Every day, every minute, he was my best pal. So that one day I walked in. And that day that Michelle gave me the cold shoulder and then Davey, he just sort of evaporated. And as you're looking in that direction, like there's a little bit of light in the room coming in from the outside, but there's also what looks like some lanterns, like illuminated sconces on the wall. You see the, the face kind of turn around a bit. They look gaunt, Davey does. Uh, eyes sunken a little bit. They don't have the same kind of look that uh, that you know that the fallen did when you were when you were fighting them in the diner when you were fighting them elsewhere. Uh, they they certainly look intact, but they have this. There's a, underneath that that gaunt look. There is that kind of boyish teenage visage. It, you probably don't even know what he looks like now, but he looks just like he did then. He's got a social D shirt on, social distortion shirt on, and kind of wandering around. He's got. You know, his uh, his baggy pants, you know, his baggy shorts with the with the wallet chain kicking back to his <laughs> to his uh, to his back pocket. And uh, you're confident that that is him. Uh, and then as you peer around to the rest of the room, there's others as well. Some of them are maybe Michelle's friends, you know, someone that, you know, you know she would kind of confide in, tell secrets about you, others here and there. But all four of the people in here definitely seem to bear that striking familiarity. Maybe you don't remember all their names, uh, but you certainly remember their faces and their faces are quite clear. So this is what you all see. And so dread will whisper back to everybody. I knew those four, or at least I knew whoever they represent. They were punks, from our high school, hangers on. I don't know what it means here, but we can't seem to get away from our past. Yeah, I remember them. They were like your little minion group that followed you around for, well, until the problem happened. Yeah. Well, well do we want to question them or do we want to just try to sneak by? Let me. Let me get some help first. And um, Leaf is going to put her hand onto the ground and have like a pulse of green magic energy kind of 
run, remanates out. And then she's going to pull her hand up. And as she does, she's going to try to pull some skeletons out of the ground. Okay. Uh, do you have to roll for this? I can't remember. I do. I have um, three wisdom. So I get 3d6 and my d12 to see if I cause uh, God dead. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I remember. Uh, all right. So I've got a seven, which means no God debt on my d12. And then I've got a four, a four, and a five, which means I get three skeletons. Uh, and so you hear the sounds of sloshing in the water and you look behind towards the way that you guys came and you see climbing up the same way you came, climbing up from that water below, you see these skeletons covered and coated in the sludge of the water. You can see there's chunks of grime and seaweed that's kind of stuck between their ribs here and there. Uh, a few of them. Uh, you can see a few of their bones are missing, uh, been replaced what looks like by a chunk of like soggy wood or a piece of metal here or there. And they come sort of zoetrope like skittering in your direction. Hey, Dread, you want to see if we can scare the piss out of them? I know I can. Let's see what you can do. Fair enough. Um, I'm going to see how they react. I'm going to have the skeletons um, stop motion movement that they are covered in slime, just like zombie walk towards the ghouls and to see how they react. And if we, yeah, base okay. our, our actions on that. Okay. Um, you can see, so as they start coming closer, uh, if they're not moving in any kind of stealthy fashion, they're, you know, just sort of moving and, and, and shifting, uh, you, you watch the ghouls, these, these, this group of people just kind of turn their faces up and they have like this listless look, right? And their eyes are sunken. They're in these pale complexions and they kind of just look and they almost look resigned and they take a step or two and then you hear one of them speak up. We'll say it's Davy. And with, um, with a voice that sounds like your, like your teenage years, Tread, it's just, it's a voice you haven't heard in, in 15, 16 years. And here it is. Hey, what do you guys want? Okay. Leave us alone. We're just, I don't, we don't want to hurt you. Just, just go back. Just go back. No, seriously, go back guys, go back. And then just as keep walking forward. As they do, you can see that the all all four of them start to you know start to kind of corral around your your skeletons. Okay, fine, we warned you. And they lunge out their hands as they now come into sort of full view. You can see have these elongated claws on them, uh, sort of like a like a saber tooth claw, like kind of sweeping down. And take a swing at, uh, and he'll he'll like leap at one of your skeletons, and he will make an attack. Um, okay, so three. Uh, well, that's. Do you have any defense on the skeletons? I don't think the so. The skeletons have that's... zero guard and zero defense, and they'll have two health and well, two on all their stats. This one is ripped apart instantly uh, mm -hmm. by Davy as this huge like this huge claw sweeps through the rib cage and you just see the bones explode, the head fall vertically down in comical fashion. And one of the legs just stay vertical. Uh, and, uh, and they have collapsed to the ground. The other Davy's friends begin to rush at the two skeletons. Uh, well, uh, we could sneak by now. I don't know if we want to fight him or not up to you. Dread. It's your Davy. Room. Yeah, Davy. What? You failed me. When we were teenagers, you turned your back on me. Now you're afraid to do that. You're what? afraid to do anything other than protect me. And I'm going to try to control him. Okay. Let's now I'm assuming they they are not fallen, right? They're not fallen, no. My skeletons will react via attacking back to those that are attacking them. Yeah, f fair enough, for sure. Okay, so, uh, crap. Just, uh, 
What's his willpower? Uh, three. Okay, so he's did not. I did not exceed his willpower. So if he does, but if he tries to do anything other than protect me, he has two disadvantages. Okay, fair enough. Uh, he, Terrible. Uh, okay, so yeah, you can see he kind of looks out, confused look crosses his face, and then we see the other, like his friends and the skeletons kind of come into this clash. Uh, what is everybody else doing in this moment? Uh, looks like artists, we might be uh, fighting for your fair gold, and uh, Leaf will pull the scythe, activate it, and uh, start to run in. Okay. Yeah, artists would have been when the skeletons walked off. He would have been going to the fair gold, like for the distraction happening, just oh, running yeah. over there. I think with the distraction, no, no, no stealth or anything needed. I think that that was that was a good enough distraction that you would be able to get. So she would be talking room. to Air when she says that he's already gone. <laughs> no, <laughs> god damn it! Oh, for... uh, and then Diala and Tristan, what do you two do? Sword, sword out for Diala. Okay, uh, Tristan. So it seems like they're kind of going a different path than what I'm doing, right? You do what you like, man. Okay. Well, then I know exactly because I see that they're going their own way. And I now understand that I'm meant to be the one that will draw attention away to help them do what they're doing. And I remember that Glenn Russell was a recruiter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little spark of electricity into the little whirly gig of gears and whatnot that is Jeeves. Okay. And I'm going to try and activate Jeeves to go up and knowing their like patrol routine they're doing. I want to basically I have to roll to cast it first. Okay, so I want the hit. so the 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 patrol routine that was out you guys have climbed inside the we're, back. Okay, we're past yeah, that. Yeah, you're inside. You're you've bypassed them. I still think underneath. We got that. the fleshy ghoul fight yeah. now. We're actually inside a large like kind of cargo oh. loading bay area. Uh, artist has snuck around to the far side and seems to be inspecting this glowing workshop. Leaf has summoned the skeletons and thrown them at those people that look mostly normal. And Dread has called one by name. You might even, maybe you guys remember Davy. It's possible. Uh, and uh, and that's that's sort of what's what's. Oh, okay. You know, what's I misunderstood. I thought I was in a completely different area. That's my. I, I would assume you would have followed them once they made it past the stealthy okay. part. Yeah. Hmm. Well, fighting or sneaking? You can do anything you want, to be honest. Like, you don't have to. It's not a binary choice here. <laughs> I said I was going to use Jeeves before I misunderstood the situation, so I'm going to stand by that. Okay. Um, I'm just going to, like, I'm going to keep sneaking in. And it seems like Deacon's already dealing with. Davy, but one of the other ones. Okay. Uh, you know, maybe they've got like the appropriate 90s emo sort of look. They've got the little chains on. Yeah. Little Jeeves is just going to go walking in. They you have dark look clothes. Like you need a hug. Yeah. They and have dark like clothes and their hair head. drapes over one side a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to so, have Jeeves go in there and hug their ankles. So we'll say two of them are. are kind of entangled with Leaf's uh, uh, two other skeletons. Uh, Davy seems to be confusedly looking at, at Deacon or Dread, And so Jeeves goes up towards the third and you look like you need a hug. Okay. So <laughs> what, what is, so what is, what are you trying to accomplish with this? Basically with just the, it, it is a very loving grapple attack. <laughs> okay. Like, because Jeeves legitimately thinks that they need affection. <laughs> Roll a charisma test. Two. <laughs> oh, God. Are you kidding? Okay. Um, two. Yeah. All right. That'll bypass any defense. And you hear, like, what? Get off me, man. What? No. What? I'm going to turn that <laughs> frown upside down. Well, hey, little guy. <laughs> you shouldn't be in here. And he kneels down. Uh, what are you lost? What's what's wrong, man? What's what's going on? Don't worry. They're not going to hurt you. It's fine. You're okay. You're you're okay. And he starts to pet Jeeves as if it was like a dog. <laughs> you're okay. That's a good whatever you are. Okay. So that is that is that is that. Uh 
I'll say, Tristan, you recognize the guy too. As now, now that he's turned around and starts hugging Jeeves, uh, do you know him? He's one of the guys. Uh, he, he, you definitely would have remembered him as being part of Dread and Michelle's entourage when they were an item. Uh, do you know this guy, Tristan? Uh, Sean doesn't know if it was really his real name, but he said his name was Paris. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, there was that's a dude from my high school like legitimately God, there was an emo dude who called himself paris so this is paris nice. man nice. i feel like so much of this game is calling out all the bullshit people that annoyed me when i was in high school like that's <laughs> yep. i feel like that's what this is oh i love it so okay. far so far. yeah that's what it feels like oh this is great i everybody that i've named so far is a loose amalgamation of somebody that i really knew <laughs> yep okay uh, all right, so Paris is talking to Jeeves and does not seem to be uh, paying too much attention. Uh, okay, so if that's the case, uh, I'm gonna have um, I'm gonna have the ghouls. Uh, well, actually, why don't you get leave? Why don't you get an attack off with your skeletons on these two other ghouls? If that's what you're doing before I go. Uh, yeah. You, okay, so I have two skeletons left. Do both? Uh, do you want me to attack with both of them or just one of them? What, however you want to handle it is fine with me. Okay. They're yeah. they're both essentially going to have their slime sludge covered hands uh, sort of swipe at the uh, one of the ghouls, and you don't realize it right away just because of the amount of gunk on there. But they're actually clawed little shaved bone bits uh, okay. underneath that sludge. Um, and that is two hits on one skeleton and two hits. Oh man, these dice are rolling well for me today. They didn't, okay. they didn't the, on Tuesday. They do have, they do have one defense. So, but, okay. so one of those will still go through. Uh, so, so both of them do one damage each. Exactly. Yeah. So I'll take that from guard. Uh, all right. So both of them have started to take scrape, you know, they, you know, they, you see the scrapes starting to appeal, appear in some of that kind of pasty, uh, the, the pasty skin of these, uh, of these people. Uh, and I think everyone's kind of done something. So I'm going to go ahead and do a round with my folks. Then, um, I'll have those, those folks who were just attacked hit back on your skeletons. Uh, first one, <laughs> it's three fives. Uh, so that one rips apart, um, your, 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 your second skeleton, and then, oh my god, two fours and a six, uh, and the other one also rips apart uh, your, your skeleton. All three of your skeleton have soaked damage for sure, uh, but they now are in piles of bones on the ground. All right, so Davy, Davy looks up and sees you, Dread. You can't tell if there is a flicker of recognition. They don't. They, they certainly don't say your name, but you hear. You hear them kind of under his breath just say dictator, you know, just like recognizing at least what you are. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see that there's a you're not sure if it's fear or if it's admiration or something. Um, but they they I mean, like their their friends are fine, so I don't think that they would care too much about that. They would walk towards you, I think they would just walk very calmly towards you like hey um what are what are you doing here like you you look like an important person and kind of surprised to see you someone such importance you know around here like it's not I'm here about. to find you i'm here to find you davy you're here to protect me i am you remember that now do i am i supposed to Maybe? How do you know my name? Davy. I'm Dread. Of course I know you. You're the one I came for. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just... Maybe I was wrong. Maybe you aren't that important. Yeah. You look pretty small, actually. And kind of unimpressive. I don't know why I ever really cared about you at all. Uh, and so he will attempt with too difficulty to lunge out in your direction at this point, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, okay. So let me roll it. Uh, 
I'm rolling. I'm on fire tonight. Six, six, four. Uh, Jesus. So, wow. Yeah, I have rolled three successes on every attack with these guys. Two of those will go away, obviously. Um, I'm going to attack with the last one. Keep one of them sixes. As this slash of this claw goes through you, Dread, there is the shittiest eating grin. And maybe it starts to occur to you that he knows who you are. He just doesn't care. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you feel your body begin to stiffen. And you are, and, and you try to move your hands, you try to move your mouth, you try to move your neck, and paralysis under or undertakes you. So on your turn, you get a chance to, to, to save and, and do something. Uh, but you do feel a, a sense of paralysis come and overtake you. Uh, and then Paris, I think Paris is just like on the ground, like, hey, hey, guy. Um, I don't know, man. Like, is, um, is your owner around here somewhere? Is, 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 I don't know. You don't have any tags. Any I'm tag. a free man. I do what <laughs> I want. Uh, yeah, I don't understand you. I'm sorry. Um, I don't speak dog. Uh, well, that's a shame. That's a shame, but that's okay. I'm going to take care of you now. And like, just starts to lift Jeeves up at this point. He pulls out a gold coin, hands it to Paris. You're welcome. Uh, do you, you want me to have this boy? You want me to have this? Uh -huh. okay. okay. Do you want to, you want to play fetch? You want to, you want to play fetch? You want, you want me to throw it? Jeeves will throw the gold coin and look at him waiting for him to fetch it. <laughs> I don't. Okay, well, I'm going to pick this up this time, but then I'm going to throw it, and you're going to go fetch it. Okay? Okay. So you see he kind of walks over towards wherever it is Jeeves through the cold court, and he is uh, he is charmed, uh, effectively, by the cuteness <laughs> that is Jeeves. Um, artist, you were checking out the workshop bench area. You notice... Uh, roll an int test while you're over here. Uh, you're going to get your fair gold, no problem. You get your, your one fair gold. Um but go ahead and while one. you're looking around, you do notice, man, you roll a lot of uh, one successes. Uh, yeah, you should try doing three cool like to I be do. you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty great. Just struggling on fair gold. Get some and then you take it all away from me. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> Night and day. Night and day. Uh, so you can see around you on the ground. There are all these different um, objects that look really, really familiar. As you walk past, uh, they, they're grimy here, but they kind of look like these broken apart trophies of some kind. You see, also see like frames and banners and things. And you, like it kind of sparks your memory at a certain point that this looks very much like a trophy case within the high school of all these various championships and runner ups and performances. And you can just see that someone has painstakingly ripped apart and torn apart all of those like cheap kind of brass painted plastic and some of those chunks uh you can see are actually glowing and have this that you can tell they have this fair gold kind of hidden hidden within them which allows you to sort of harvest it okay uh, all right, so I'm going to turn it over to you all uh Tristan and artist you can you can actually go uh, and take your turns if you like I vote artist first. All right, artist. So you just harvested your gold. You see these old trophies on the ground. Uh, what would you like to do? Uh, okay. Um, yeah, he will kind of be able to pull and collect them with a little confusion due to like the big differences that he's experienced with like previous fair gold. And he almost feels like it's a little personal. <laughs> um but he is going to... What do we want? Do we want to fly? Do we want... What do I you want? He, for now, is going to fly around. So he will grab those chunks. Maybe he'll spray paint a little bit into the air and all of a sudden the chunks kind of like glue together with the spray paint into like a, a coin shape. And then he will put it into his high top shoes and start to fly. And I think he's going to 
maybe you try and fly, sneak up to the observation tower and try and get like a bird's eye view of what's happening because I don't think he wants to really deal with the fight and he's going to pull out a gun probably, so it'll be loud. Okay. All right. Uh, so you're going to need to make a dex to fly outside and up and avoid these like sentry turrets and things to see if you can uh, move past it. Uh, I am going to... Oh, and I get a D10 to... Some stuff to see. Two successes. Okay. Uh, You do manage to get out and sort of up in the direction of one of those observation towers without, it seems like, getting shot at by any of these... uh, any of these devices that are being currently manned operated by what looks like either those like uh, automaton like creatures or in some cases uh, some of those just normal looking folk. Uh, okay. Tristan, let's go over to you. Uh, and what do you want to do? Um, I mean, so what I was trying to think of like what sort of stuff would be in this room? Like we've, we had the trophy case nearby um it's a large cargo bay uh there's a lot mm-hmm. of old broken down equipment and crates and looks like a workshop at some point on one side where there's some broken tools and things so there's lots of stuff like that so you can okay. yeah, within reason any anything that I mean, kind of fits that mold would probably be here i think at one point it was kind of like trying to kind of stealth away have jeeves do the hug attack but then seeing his good buddy deacon being paralyzed Tristan will come running back kind of jump off of a crate do like a big flying Superman punch all right who's big now ah flame punch <laughs> okay <laughs> this is on Paris on no on uh Davy on Davy okay so you're running over towards dread and uh okay so you're trying to def- <laughs> with your yeah flaming punch. he's gonna flame punch and everyone knows Sonic? he's covered in flammable Ooh. sludge so all of a sudden <laughs> okay you flame punch uh okay uh, I really hope I don't roll a six. There goes the rest eye. of his hair. I mean, Defensive that, the, the, one. there was oil in the water as described. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Okay. Well, the, fortunately, my fluke was on uh, the negative fluke. My cross was on a six, but I rolled a five on my full dice. But I got a six, six, five. Okay. Nice. Two of so, those go through. Yeah. With a flame punch, if I get a six, he's going to have ongoing flame damage. Okay. All right. So it's going to be two damage first. Okay. Uh, Because there were two successes. And so that'll clear through his guard. Uh, So his guard has been cleared through. And then he has ongoing flame damage. Does it say how much ongoing? It's one. One per. I think you can only, I think a special can only proc once. It's not like he gets two because he got two sixes. Okay. So he basically has to choose between either spending his action to put out the fire or taking the point of fire damage. Okay. Sounds great. Uh, so, and we'll say he, he does, it is the oil. He is like, he's not, he wasn't waiting around in the water like you were, but he is, you do see he's kind of coated here and there in this sludge. So some of that does catch on fire. Uh, like all of these folks in here, despite having very nineties anachronistic garb on all of it kind of is coated in something. Uh, all right. So that was just an artist. Let's go to D, uh, Diala, Leaf and Dread. Uh, what are the three of you doing? Red well, is just going to try to break out of his paralysis. I that's guess. a good thing to do. Mm-hmm. So what uh, is that a Yes, that is going to be a wisdom roll. Mm. Wisdom, okay. Uh, also, yeah. not my strong suit. No difficulty to it, so it's just a straight up roll. Oh, I got a six. Okay, you feel yourself become paralyzed uh you can you try to speak it's very sluggish your voice even your vocal cords for a moment almost feel like they just don't want to move but as you concentrate hatred of this guy coursing through you almost kind of warms you up a bit and begins Mm -hmm. to sort of reignite your your desire to do something what would you like to do he's on fire too by the way deacon just whispers to him davy well, first he reclaims his D4, and then he goes, Davy, I was mistaken. You're afraid of the very breath in your lungs. Expel it out and never let another sip in. So I will 
Just attempt to straight up murder him. <laughs> straight up attempt. Yeah, this is you're your, afraid you know. of the air in your lungs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so those of you nearby, Tristan, you would see this. Uh, probably Diala. Maybe. Better. Actually, no. Oh. I would think the two of you are probably up by the by the other ones. So definitely Tristan. More of those like dreads face right now. Shadows melting down reflecting that flame in some ways. It almost looks like an oil stick for a second, Tristan. There's maybe concern that the fire is going to flip over onto his face, but it doesn't because oh, no. these liquid shadows just something else. And I would say, you know, to, to a degree, Tristan, like you've seen this before, but every time it happens, he is very, very terrifying to look at. Uh, okay. How'd you do on the roll? I got a intensity of six. So <laughs> that's just straight up death. It's, supernatural level of doom (laughs) so you watch then uh dread tristan and then i would say leaf and diallo you can hear this as he kind of implodes he just begins to fold in on himself and there's this hideous sickening crunch as bone after bone after bone begins to just take these very minor folds one after the other after the other like the painful scream that's coming out of him at this point it begins loud like a normal screen would and then it just slowly gets higher pitched more childlike more desperate until finally all you see left is this compacted flaming ball of junk that falls to the ground burns and it's this effectively dusted charcoal perquette on the ground Fred puts his boot down on it and just crunches the last of it. And he just turns and looks at Tristan. He's got a smile on his face. Thank you for the assist, Tristan. Uh My pleasure. Uh Uh (laughs) Yes! God, I still hate you so much. There it is. I love Uh, you, too. There it is. All right, Diala and Leaf, Uh, you've still got... A couple of these others that are here. Leaf will lean into Diala. I don't know what's more disturbing. The fact of crushing a person into a little speck of dust or the fact that they just high-fived. Uh, I'm going to go with the first, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's fair. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's the more normal answer. Uh, and Leaf is just going to like swipe down with the scythe. Uh, sort of a trail of green energy left behind as it goes. Uh, little oblows will appear in the air, and I'm going to try to do a, a blast attack at one of the remaining uh, ghouls. Fantastic. Uh, defensive one, but otherwise, yeah, rip it. Uh, yes, and because I'm using um, the Reaper, I believe I get an advantage. Yes. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Uh, dice. Uh, that is a six, a six, five, a four, and a ten on the d12, so I don't need to worry about that one. Uh, so that's four hits. Now, Dread, did you take any damage at this point in time, or was it just paralysis? The guard damage. Okay. Uh, oh, which, guard damage. Which will regenerate at the end of the Yeah, I, I, I can't do anything. Uh, then instead of uh, healing, I will do... Um, an additional hit, so I will do five wounds instead. Okay, one of those successes will go away because of the defense, so I think you ended up with three defenses, and so so if you do three defenses, mm-hmm. or excuse me, three hits, uh, mm-hmm. is it just straight three hits, or do you have anything special that goes on top of it? Yes, because I got two sixes, a four, and a five, so I got four dice in total, which means I triggered my special, which does two wounds instead of one on one of them, so it's still four. It, yes, you're right. It counts down from five to four, but that's still four. Okay, still four. All right. Yeah, so still four. Four's total. That will burn through all of this one's guard. And you're attacking one of the ones that destroyed one of your skeletons, or are you attacking the one that is currently um, hanging out with, with, with uh, Jeeves? Oh, I'm sure Jeeves has that one. Okay, so if that's the case, these others have been already hit. They've lost a point of guard. Uh, and you said four total, right? Yeah, so just like these little uh, tokens that one would see on the eyes of the dead appear and just shoot out at one of the ghouls that uh, took out my skeletons. You see, uh, it just 
with perfect precision, it charges at them. Maybe they don't see you. Maybe their head is head is you know it is sort of turned. It goes right into the back of its head and pops out the front, and you can now see directly through it to where those glowing kind of artifacts were that Artis was rummaging through on the other side as they were about to kind of close it on Diala, it looks like, and they just fall to the ground. There we go. Dealt with. That is one the rest down. is your problem. All right, so we have Paris, who's with Jeeves, and then we have one more that is left. Diala, uh, what do you want to do? Okay, so are these two anywhere close to each other? Uh, these two ghouls? I think because Paris was specifically fetching a thrown coin, that I would say it's <laughs> sure, probably sure, sure. not near them. Yeah. yeah, okay. Then I will uh, attack the other one then. Fair enough. Okay. So my strength is three. That is a six, a six, and a three. Okay, six and six and a three. One of those sixes will go away because of the defense, but one is remaining. So you still have one. Do you have okay. anything that you trigger with specials? Uh, so do I have to have an extra success in order to get a special? Nope. Like, nope. Do I have you to have a, to have a six? Okay. Mm -mm. All right. So the special is if this hit removes a guard from your foe, remove two instead of one. It does, in fact, remove guard. He's got no guard left. Okay. So you do manage to swing out. It's not as perfect a hit. It's not a one-shot kill. Uh, but as you slash through their back where these various tour dates were uh, of whatever shirt that they were wearing, you just see a splurt of this dark, viscous red blood. It's, it's, it's red, but it looks definitely looks a little strange. There's something about it that looks a little bit tainted. Uh, and they quickly whirl on you. And I'm okay. just going to go ahead and say they swing at you because they're right here. Uh, and yep. it's their turn. Uh, do that you have any defense? Uh, I have one defense. Yep. Yes. I only I rolled a 2-4-2. Two, two, so my my hot streak has ended. They swing out at you. Maybe the pain in their back has, has deterred them somewhat. And they miss. Meanwhile, uh, Paris has wandered over and picked up the coin. I'm like, okay, are you ready? Uh, I'm going to throw it and it's your turn. And so he throws the coin and puts Jeeves back down on the ground. What does Jeeves do? I like, so we're, <clears throat> whenever he was, was he like near an edge of anything? Like, is this, is this, yeah, this? why not? There's a, there's a whole drop into the, in, you know, back down into the water where you guys came up. Jeeves is not smart because he is a fool's automaton. Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm going to go get it. I'm scared. And he just holds onto Paris's like chain. Okay. The little little bow chain. Yeah, yeah. And he yeah. just grabs Paris's chain and jumps over the edge. <laughs> <laughs> Does Jeeves Jeeves stat it out? He's just twos down the line. Mindless service is twos just down two. the line. Roll two D six. It's hilarious. Uh I'm gonna give you an advantage because this is probably unexpected. It's Very such, unexpected. Such betrayal. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and roll it in with an advantage. Roll 3d6, uh, defense of one. How'd you do? <laughs> Two. I love Chief <laughs> so much. Okay. <laughs> I'm scared. Come with me. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? No, you go, whoa! And so <laughs> you just hear the scream of this guy as he falls over the side with Jeeves and the two go splashing into the muck below. Okay. Let's go around to the top. Uh, 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 sort of the top of the, the order here and let's talk about and also the top of the the area as artist you were kind of going to one of these towers right mm -hmm. you you come up and first thing you notice is that on some of these these you know larger towers and stacks and things like that there has been machinery that has been installed and does again like i said appears to be they appear to be manned and occupied as if they're looking out at the water looking out at the ground um, and you notice as well that the observation tower is very much like a, like a lighthouse. So there's like a little catwalk around the outside and kind of a door that goes inside the glass itself. It's still intact, but extremely grimy. Uh, it's not the easiest to see inside. Uh, but you're able to kind of land in. Let me see if there's anyone there as you kind of sweep inside. 
Uh, are and you said you're and you're doing this kind of stealthily, right? Yes. Okay. So as you as you hover over the the catwalk and sneak around and peek in through the door, uh, you notice that there is a very large, almost slime like blob. Just it's sort of like an extremely large oversized beanbag chair. It is discolored. It's like a kind of this green brown color. Uh, and you can see that it's just inexplicably with no clear signs of why just kind of moving and listing. Uh, there's a console in here that seems to operate all these different what you think are just some kind of you know cog wheels and, and gears it might just be for turning or maybe like an old-fashioned kind of lighthouse light that shifts uh this thing hasn't noticed you whatever it might be but you get the feeling that it's not just idle sludge you get the feeling that it is aware uh, it doesn't seem to be doing anything that you can determine uh, but it certainly seems like it's functioning. There is a trap door, but half of the sludge is kind of covering it, and that would kind of go back down, uh, down the tower. Uh, so yeah, that is. What and you does see. this tower have any weaponry on it, or is it just like for? Uh, this is an observation tower specifically, so it's literally just sort of uh, like a lighthouse. But you can see that there are a series of stacks and repurposed repurposed towers here and there. So we'll say. If you want to go over to one, you can, but all of them are, are that you can see are manned or operated. This one just purely looks like a, an right. observation tower, spotting tower. And the the big golems are those fallen or are they like something else? Uh, they are something else. They're golem automaton type okay. creatures. Like you guys have played enough D and D type to understand what they might right. be. Um, yeah, I think he will um, knowing that this gelatinous cube doesn't see him. He is going to basically try to uh, fly to like the where the ceiling or the roof would be, and he's going to like spider walk on the roof of it to get towards the console and try and okay. go like above where this creature would look and try to hack the console while the creature is just you know unaware. Okay. All right. Um, roll roll an int test, but let's add a difficulty to this as you're upside down, you're trying to do this quietly, all that type of stuff. So we'll add a difficulty to the end test to make sure you can do this. Okay. I'm going to add my D10 because I'm using like my flying to my boots, basically. Man, this guy just rolls <laughs> blanks. I only got one. That's a lot of ones. I know, right? Only one, and with the one difficulty, you're you're hovering over top. You're trying to sort of hack into these old-fashioned controls. You do notice, strangely enough, though, that when you start messing around with the console a bit, like it certainly has like levers and gauges. Like it definitely has that that sort of steampunk vibe. You do see the gauges get very colorful, neon lit. And you can see like there's this backlit like underneath the console where the levers and the switches begin to illuminate in some way. There's a it gives you a vibe of something, you know, you can see like this little console display start popping up, shifting and moving in this this honestly very dated looking 3D creation. This like ship kind of balancing back and forth, looking like it's listing and turning and dipping and turning like not sure exactly what it is, but it. it you get the feeling that there is some sort of like protection on it and that you couldn't hack through it. It's going to take you some time and doing it. And like the longer you wait at some point, this creature is going to sense you're here. Okay. So let's then, um, kick back around. Uh, I'm going to say that those of us in the, in the bay, there's only one of these dudes left. Uh, you all can describe how you take care of it. I'm going to say, uh, Kristen, do me a favor. Roll a. Actually, just tell me higher low. When you're not say, muted, yeah. higher low. I think he said high. <laughs> high. Okay. All right. Sorry, I was you, muted. High. You go over, and you look down to where Jeeves hopped out, like clinging on to the to the sort of the the chain. And you can see that Jeeves is in the water, just sort of floating around. 
and kind of looking up at you. Hi! And then you see <laughs> right next to, uh, looks like poor Paris uh, got the short end of it as he is impaled on this rusted looking pipe that's sticking up out of the water. <laughs> he's still kind of moving a little bit here and there, like he's not fully dead yet, uh, but he will be shortly, or at nice. least whatever these dead creatures become. Uh, but yeah, and you can see that Jeeves is still kind of holding on to the wallet and chain. Uh, I imagine you can get him up somehow. Nice. I'll, what I'll probably do just for the ease, like I would release the spell so the components can come back. So I, I would need to recast it later. Okay. All right. And Good then, job, little buddy. Let's take a nap. I did it. I'm helping. You did? <laughs> You're helping. He was very nice, but very really stupid. Uh, <laughs> Leaf and Diala and Dread, why don't you just tell me how you take out this last one or what you do with this last one who is surrounded, outgunned, out, out, man. What do you want to do? Diala, if you stab him, yeah, yeah. go for it. I was it. right in front, so I think she was sure. just like, she took a swing, you know, with the sword one way, and then she'll just like do a backswing in the other direction. Uh, with Absolutely. Her sword. And they just kind of crumples to the ground looking up at you. Uh, what? Why did you? <sighs> and just kind of collapses at that point. Not really, not really able to finish the sentence. Uh, okay. Which, uh, and I think Diallo would sort of look around at everybody and just say, "And why? Why? Why did we? Did they? Did they attack us?" Yes. There's no point in having enemies behind you. I learned that the hard way. So they did attack us. Well, I, mean, I, I saw them stab Deacon. No, they didn't attack us. I, I just walked. wanted Davy dead. I, oh, uh, Davy! Yeah, yeah. Davy. You mm. remember him? It was another Mike Michelle situation. This is okay. I can see that. Didn't was an artist just talking to us about not killing people we don't need to kill though? Didn't we just have that chat? Well, we keep having that chat. We had that chat after the ship, and then we had that chat after the village, which was, <clears throat> and then we had hmm. that chat again a few times. So, you know. And the point is, he said, don't kill people we don't have to kill. And I had to kill him. So I'm comfortable with my decision. You're comfortable with a whole lot of things, though. So yeah. I'm not really sure you are Your the like barometer for what we should all be comfortable level with. Level of just morality. I know, Adelia. I know, Leaf. But let's let's face facts. Your opinion on this doesn't really bother me one way or the other. Well, this is true. You really just don't give a shit. So, well, you know. Where did... He flew off. Art? Yeah, oh. he... I don't know. He, I guess he found what he was looking for in the treasury cabinet over there. What would artists be doing once it seems like you're not going to be able to hack this thing with this creature still present? Yeah, like his idea was trying to fly up and trying to be able to create a diversion by either like hacking one of the weapons and shooting it at their own guards. Like he, that was his whole concept of flying in the begin with. It's like some way where he could either trigger something or fire something where it would, you know, draw attention where we're not. And then we just go inside. Okay. Uh, I think we can do this. So just to... Let's just take a step back for a second. So in terms of this skill endeavor abstraction dungeon crawl progression, you've all made literally one roll so far towards that, which was I was counting Tristan's stealth to get you all into the back cargo bay area. So awesome. If you're looking to do that, we can call it the next thing. So you just kind of tell me, you tell me what you're doing. I'll call for a test. And then whether or not there's any difficulty on top of it. So if your goal is to try to take over one of these platforms or to try to hack or whatever it might be, you tell me how you're doing it and then we'll sort out what I, what we might want to roll with that. Yeah, I think he wants to try and hack the machinery and see if it can just like, you know, hold down the trigger on the gun and just sits there and shoots into the like towards the guards or towards whatever direction we're currently not trying to go to or at. Okay. So we'll say... Knowing that whatever this console is, whatever this creature is up here, is you're probably pushing your luck a little bit. We'll say you fly out, you fly one, find one of these other, like like topped off, capped smokestacks, probably, 
where one of these trebuchets has been anchored on top of it, you can see that there is a golem of some kind here, much like the ones that Tristan saw when you guys were first traversing uh, the ground. When you look at it, you do see that there's a face, but you can't quite make it out. But you probably can hover just underneath it and maybe reach up from below since this golem is so tall and you're kind of using this trebuchet gun thing to uh, to sort of obscure your its sight of you. You can try to hack it in from that direction. I'm still going to put a difficulty of one on it uh, to try to do this, but if you want to give that a try, it might be able to create a certain level of distraction. Sure. He doesn't know they've defeated the monsters anyways. Mm -mm. Finally, my God. There you go. Nice, nice, nice. He still rolled a one. But I know, that one's still there. there too. So you see, so in terms of like the hacking, you, you're you're looking at kind of like this sort of the the base, like you manage to weave your way into more of the hardware as opposed to the software of it all. And you've almost kind of re like kind of rewired in some ways the, the, the base and it kind of starts to swerve and you hear the machinery of the trebuchet launch and it fires off what is basically like this glowing orb that just has this tail behind it. It's like this rainbow colored orb, very, very much like that oily, like kind of rainbow, you know, visage that I was talking about before. And it lands on the, on the beach below kind of right where those sentries were going and explodes in this eruption of, of sludge that comes out and sort of sucks back in. And everything is just coated in goo, including one of those golems. And you just kind of keep doing that for a little bit. And you almost leave like this, this like this little set of circuitry in place in a way that's going to automate it until someone notices it. You can hear the golem panicking a little bit. Error, 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 error. And you just kind of leave it there and begin to sort of drift back. Those of you, uh, I would say, Tristan, you were outside-ish or just on the edge. You can definitely see some of those, whatever it was that were flying, whether they were gargoyles or whatever it might be, you see them are, they're like making a just a beeline up towards those the tops. You hear explosions coming from back the way you came. I would say you can't really see it, but you can hear them just exploding. And then we see artists suddenly appear from above. Nice distraction. Let's make the most of it and get inside this place. Yeah, I mean, we can do that. I was wondering, I mean, I can fly and it's a really high wall. Do we want to just fly up on the wall? Yep. You can fly. The rest of us yeah. can't fly. Well, I can bring one of you at a time. Forward we go. Okay, so we looked into that. No, no you can't. I trust oh. weird yeah. flying things there's no way i'm getting off the there extra weight of another individual would radically destabilize the lifting of the jetpack so you wouldn't really be able to do it you could probably carry jeeves but anybody else like if you try to carry a full other person you wouldn't be able to do so From you have cool things that you can do with your pack our feet are on the ground and we're going to uh, go yeah. forward but and you got fair gold that's science good. fiction that's not happening to me um, in this loading bay, uh, how many doors do we see out of here or what sort of exits, windows do we see from here? Oh, yeah, there's there's tunnels that go right into the sludge factory just fine. Like nothing's covered. Okay. Like, yeah, no problem. OK, if you go flying up, it, do we need to follow the path of the ley line? Is that's what is that what will get us there? From your map that you had there, artist? Sure. Okay. Well, then easy peasy. I'll just keep casting detect magic for the ley line. Uh, you know, I can I can actually detect magic if I wanted as well. If you wanted to not do your version of it. I swing at things and I hit things. I we're 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 going through the door. Yes. And that's. Yeah. Yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. Deacon's already walking just, down a tunnel. He's just. <laughs> thank you. I just want to remind you guys that the whole idea of the sludge faculty was that there was a hidden intake, like you're trying to literally get through like this intake 
tunnel into the walled city, which doesn't just have walls, but has I a remind rooftop, you, so. we're a group of players who are going to <laughs> shenanigan, and you can't stop us. We're okay. going in. We're we are going in. So, I'm following Dread. I am uncomfortably flying in the tunnel. <laughs> I'm following Leaf. Um, quickly though, while we are following behind, uh, Leaf is going to swipe their hand along the wall of this tunnel and try to summon, uh, some little animal skeletons to scout the way for us a little bit better. Aww. Yeah, go right in. Since my other skeletons got mercilessly killed so quickly, uh, no, I don't get any skeletons. There's nothing here. That's a okay. one, three, three. Maybe sh- we maybe just get like a fish mm-hmm. skeleton that can't move. Oh, yeah, that doesn't work. Never mind. Just step on that, would you, Tristan, as you're behind me? Fish yep. skeleton. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, if you're pushing in, uh, I think Dredd was the first to say that. You kind of start moving down the tunnel a bit. Uh, it's, again, everything's sort of this rusted, rusted view of everything, like metal. You don't really see any signs of any any other kind of, any other sort of, sort of materials or substance. Uh, grime everywhere. You can see there's some some stuff seeping through uh, the various seams and the walls and then the floors and such. Uh, at a certain point, it does like the tunnel kind of ends. Uh, you can hear the sounds of dripping up ahead, and when you step into like this this room, uh, you can see that there is. There is a, a sense of, of discoloration. There's lights that are kind of illuminating it, Dread, kind of coating everything. And I would say, artist, with your speed, you're quickly there as well. And the two of you can see, like, the whole room, you can hear the sounds of, like, dripping and dripping and dripping, like, just the sounds of, of this constant sound of water dropping into something else. And everything's discolored. Everything's like this sort of array of very colorful, uh, colorful coating, shifting and moving, almost like the... The, like being in an indoor swimming pool. And as you're moving around, you do notice that there are a series of pools of water in the room. Uh, all of them are, they, when you look at them, they're like the water itself is kind of this gray green, but you see all these little chunks, these little tiny little chunks of like of various metal in them. that seem to be giving off that same kind of rainbow glow that you saw in some of the objects by the workshop artists also, the ammunition uh, of that trebuchet. Uh, And as the, so we'll say the two of you are in there first, this is what you see there. I would say there's uh, maybe three of them. Yeah. There's three of them about the room. Uh, It's again, a very large industrial size room. You see these old vats as well, but they don't seem to have anything in them. They've been like ripped down the side. And even though they're standing like 10, 12 feet tall, you can see there's these big chunks that have been taken out of them. Uh, and whatever they did store at one point is long gone. You can walk in and out of them with ease. You do hear the sounds of and sometimes as you're looking around the room, there is a very large shadow that's being thrown about here and there. You think somewhere in this large room, there might be one of those automaton type creatures that you saw outside. Uh, and that's, yeah, that's it. What do you see when you go inside? Dread will so, whisper over to artist. If I remember right, Billy used to always love to put things in pools to jump out at us. We might want to keep our distance from there if we can. I mean, I can <laughs> I mean, fly, <laughs> so I'm pretty good, but I can go find us a path, maybe. I like it. So he'll go fly kind of going stealthily, obviously, but trying to find, you know, where this creature is, if those pools do have some, like, you know, from a bird's eye view, if I see yep. shadows in the pools, stuff like that. Uh, give, yes, yeah, do probably decks, I guess, uh, as you're stealthing around, moving around, trying to not bang into anything. Two. Okay. Uh, you notice, uh, first of all, that the there's like an automaton, same type of creature that you've seen before. Uh, same like the ones up top, ones down below by the by the sand. Uh, it seems to be doing this pacing back and forth in front of this large archway that seems as though it's kind of crumpled in some ways, like it's suffered some kind of structural damage, but it's just pacing back and forth in front of it. You realize that its height is probably a little bit 
too tall for the crumpled nature of the archway. And it seems to almost be stuck in this loop. Like it's trying to go down that crumpled uh, hallway, but its size is just so much that it can't quite fit. Uh, it doesn't extend. It doesn't seem to ever move off that path. It's just constantly right in front of it. Like it's just stuck, uh, like a, like a fly trying to get out a window. Um, from above, if you're looking down at the pools, uh, you, it's hard to tell whether there's anything waiting to leap out at you, but you can definitely tell there's stuff in it. Uh, like there's stuff at the bottom of the pools and your reflection is very odd. Uh, it doesn't properly seem to reflect you in some way, but since you're zipping by and you're a little bit high in the bird's eye view, you can't see it quite well, but it just, it does seem to distort or change your reflection in some fashion. What artists might also see is uh, Diala would come up to whatever the first one was and kind of examine the water because it looks more like water than sludge, right? Uh, yeah, it's definitely water. It's, it's, I mean, like okay. it's tainted and it's, but it's, it's different than what you've seen before. Yeah. Well, there's so kind of like she's going to chromatic shimmering to it. She's going to look at that. And after all of the sludge that she swam in earlier, uh, mm -hmm. she's going to stick her face in. Uh, Dale, you, be like, to what? you go to stick your face in it. And as your oh, face yeah. comes very close to the surface of the water, you, you see a reflection. Yeah, uh, except your reflection's going to grab your face. It is not Diala, uh, 33 year old Diala. It is 17 year old Diala, 16 year old Diala. It looks very much like the Delilah, uh, from, well, that day that you got into detention and you first met these people what does that look like delilah as you go to lean and you see suddenly see your teenage self in the reflection so she's looking down and she's expecting to see a shaved head and lots of kind of dark eye makeup and what she instead sees is this kind of longer dark hair that's just sort of poking out underneath uh, a pulled up black hood of a hoodie and no makeup on whatsoever. And it's, it's extremely clear. Like the reflection is, is abnormally clear. Like you're, it's like you're looking through, you know, a vacuum tube type TV, you know, from it, it's still, it's still distorted in some way but it's not like looking in the reflection in actual water. Like you see your face, like as you tilt your head, your head tilts, you raise an eyebrow, your eyebrow raises, everything kind of works out. Make faces. That you do. All of those faces are reflected back at you as your teenage self. And for a second, she's like, Oh, I looked young again. <laughs> um, and, uh, and then she just kind of looks around to everybody and sees if they're there yet. It's, it's what? It's, it's me, but not me. It's what? Look, uh, okay. Look down. Yeah. And anybody what who looks see? into it, Leaf. same thing. You see yourself as like a seventeen-year-old or sixteen-year-old, or old you were when you first met. Well, that's weird. You still smell really bad, though. I, well, I meant to clean with it but that's so and then so um this thing like will open up one of his pouches and pull out a pack of wet wipes <laughs> <laughs> i'll use my fool's prep for that just for you <laughs> oh thank you this gosh this sludge i don't know how you've been walking around with this this just smells Can you use it on oh. you also sean yeah i okay. mean yeah. ladies first of course well, thank you. And she'll kind of wipe everything off. This water. And so she'll try to see if she can cup some of the water. Reach in. Yeah, cup some of it. No problem. Is, oh, is it a little you in your hands? I yeah, mean, if you look into what you've cupped, like you yeah. get the portion of your face that would fit in the cup right. of water. Yeah. 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 Okay. That I... That's just so, uh, um, and then she'll remember that the reason that she put her face down is she wanted to like look to see what was in the water. Mm -hmm. And so then she's going to, um, 
kind of close her eyes, hold her breath, and stick her face in, and then open her eyes under the water. Now you're just a different kind of smelly. When you dunk your head into the water, you look below, open up your eyes. Uh, you see that beneath the water, a couple feet down below, is a body. Uh, it has a very confused and somewhat pained look on your on their face and it is a face that you are also extraordinarily familiar with as it is yours the body is yours you can see that strangely almost in sort of like this exaggerated form um where what did delilah get for plastic surgery more very recently what was it that she had changed about herself um, I would say that she, um, let's say that she got a nose job. Okay. And you can see that there is something, it looks like the nose looks intact, looks, you know, symmetrical in the ways that you want it to be. It looks well-crafted in good condition, almost pristine. But the rest of you, I mean, the rest of you, like your, your cheekbone is kind of sagging on one side, whereas it's a little bit up on the other. Your eyebrows are kind of some, a few hairs are kind of a little bit bushier than you want them to be. You can see a bit of your ears kind of hanging down just a little bit, a bit further than the others. You can see your body is like, got that kind of gangly youth like you've not quite grown into it uh you can tell that there's a slight hinge in the jaw like a slight twist like all the imperfections that delilah probably saw in the mirror uh, as a kid are on full display and in contrast to this nose are extraordinarily noticeable and as you're there, kind of looking with your eyes open, the body, their eyes open up and its arm reaches out and lunges and grabs your throat. Uh, and uh, we'll end right there for tonight, <laughs> I think. And Yay! Oh gosh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that. Oh. I told you Billy did stuff at the pool. Uh, I said the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is, this is the alien resurrection room. <laughs> You're gonna see all the. Okay, rabbits. I'm standing right next to you. I can at least attack it. Okay, I feel like second time. I don't want to do another combat. Yet. Yeah, gotta look, gotta look and see what's there. Don't want to get surprised. Someone had to. <laughs> exactly. I just thought it was exactly. gonna be Sean. I <laughs> I was busy with the wet wipes. I had to get in my pool prep you, at least once. You just did a whole shower with a wet wipe. <laughs> yeah, I watched <laughs> it. in the pool. Like within the first 20 minutes of the episode, I said I would do it for you. And I did. You did. <laughs> you did. It's much appreciated because now when I die to myself, I will do so while smelling less. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Possibly. Uh, and I mean, the good thing is, is that if this thing kills you, you can just play this one as your backup character. <laughs> nice. You're already, you're already different. Yeah, you just awesome come back as this version, the under undead one. The other one doesn't come back. We're like, oh, that's weird. Wow, that water uh, did not do you any favors. Just <laughs> gonna need to spend some time with a tweezer, though. It's just, just tweak the stats, yeah. like lower charisma, a touch, just a little bit. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, let's go. Let's go ahead and do some closing plugs, and we'll get on out of here. Aaron, uh, tell us what's going on with Garblag. Uh, on Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Millie will be back running some more Coriolis. And on Thursday, you can join Lewis for, um, I think they're done with the prologue, so it should be the first episode of the season three of the One Ring show there, uh, the Ballad of the Bardings. Yeah, I watched a little of that today, actually, because I, was, yes, uh, yeah. I wasn't in work. I wasn't at work this afternoon, so I got to see some of it finally for the first time in a long time. Uh, let's see. Jeremy, tell us about the, the Patreon. Yeah, Aaron Reese on Patreon. If you got comics, maps, tokens, other fun stuff, check it out. Why not? Why not, indeed. Uh, and then Evan, uh, what do you got going on, man? Nothing. 
<laughs> nothing. Absolutely nothing. Okay, fair enough. Uh, as for us here at the Lollygaggers, we've got other games. What do we got going on? Uh, tomorrow night, we're going to be back to Delta Green. We're starting up a new scenario of our, our second campaign of Delta Green. How so it's dare new scenarios. you do that when I'm traveling and don't have internet? How dare you? Never mind. Oh, Game's sorry. canceled. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> Thank once, you. No, no. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we'll be around. Uh, sadly, sadly, keeps it will not. So, but it'll be on VOD. It's fine. Uh, then uh, Saturday, we're doing some One Ring, as per usual. Speaking of One Ring, Monday we should be back to Call of Cthulhu. At least that's what's on the schedule. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens. It's a very cursed game, which is fitting. Uh, Tuesday, you can catch, uh, Kipser, Aaron, myself, and Melissa playing in some Forbidden Lands as, uh, Stephen Hopson's to the GM seat. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll be back, uh, we'll be back next Thursday with more die. Uh, let's go ahead and raid somebody, uh, not Critical Role. I think they've got enough. Let's do, I don't know, Femme Gamer Party. There we go. They're playing Dungeons and Dragons, but that's fine. Uh, thanks for everyone going out tonight. Uh, thanks for those of you who are watching this later on the various other ways in which this can be digested. Uh, and we'll see y'all later. Bye-bye. Good night. <laughs>